Hi friends, welcome to Gate Academy. In this video, I'll give you a brief introduction on the topics I'll discuss in P Drive or G Drive courses of Gate Academy. So, what exactly is a P Drive course? I mean, many people may be knowing that the idea of P Drive courses is giving you all the topics in a pen drive format so that you can go through the videos for different different topics, different different subjects, and learn the subjects and apply that to get uh, you know to crack various examinations like Gate Engineering Service examinations and you know interviews of the PSUs and some state service examinations also can be cracked because you know in state service examinations also the theory part or uh, you know uh, you know the conventional part or the subjective part um, will not go out of these topics so the topic i'll be discussing today here is water resource engineering and hydrology and in that first one i'll be discussing is water resource engineering uh, whose weightage in gate is 2 to 4 marks and engineering services is 15 to 30 marks. So, you can see here gate weightage is only 2 to 4 marks and you can think that you can neglect but no because everyone, everyone is going to solve this question because there are it is very very simple questions are being asked from this subject. So, do not neglect these type of subjects like water resource engineering, hydrology, open channel flow. You can see like these are only 2 to 4 marks and people are not giving concentration for this one and they are losing marks because these are basic questions and everyone is scoring that and even you, are, you also have to score that. So, coming to the chapters or topics that I am discussing in water resource engineering, sometimes this is also called as irrigation engineering. So, the first one is global distribution of water. So, in global distribution of water, the name itself says uh, how water is distributed in the world like how much por uh, portion in ocean, how much portion in the fresh water, generally 97.5 percent, 2.5 percent in how in the fresh water, how much is present in the form of uh, ice and how much is present in the form of liquid, everything will be discussed in the global distribution of water. Next, see the next interlinking is there is a water that is available and how you are going to use that water? Multi-purpose use of water will be give, uh, you know discussed in the second chapter. Multi-purpose use of water is drinking water, irrigation, hydrology, I mean uh, hydropower, next uh, ecology and agriculture, non-agricultural uses and then navigation. You know there are many multi-purpose uses of water. So, coming to multi-purpose use of water, I said drinking water, next one is irrigation, right. So, water resource engineering mainly deals with irrigation, the third chapter is irrigation. So, irrigation, uh, what is irrigation? I mean irrigation introduction and definition all those things. Irrigation means what exactly? Like you know it is providing water to the field or crops for its growth. So, I mean a definition definition where the definition will be used definitions or all those things it might be asked in engineering service examinations in conventional part that is it that is why introduction and definition will be given to you and then advantages and disadvantages of the uh, irrigation <coughs> advantages why you are uh, providing water to the field for its effective growth that means in order to increase the yield right. So, and then disadvantages the direct benefits and indirect benefits, direct benefit is increasing the growth, indirect benefit is in, in order to provide the irrigation you will construct a dam, because of constructing dam hydropower electricity will be generated, drinking water supply will be given, navigation facilities will be provided. So, those are indirect benefits of irrigation and disadvantages is if you provide more amount of water to the field what happens, water logging because of water logging many cause many effects will be there on the growth of the crop and then because of more amount of water there will be spread of diseases because many flies mosquitoes will be breeding on that water so different advantages and disadvantages will be discussed in this one and then types of irrigation maybe you would have heard or uh, seen in your fields like you know surface irrigation subsurface irrigation and then sprinkler irrigation, drip irrigation, different types of irrigation will be discussed and this 
is an important topic in your engineering service examinations because they might ask and there is a problem in border strip irrigation that problem is also asked many times in engineering service examination. So, this gives a major amount of marks and then quality of irrigation water this is also being asked quality of irrigation water means you cannot provide drainage water to the field right because if you provide drainage water what happens the, there will not be growth of crops because there will be microorganisms there will be different different salts that affects the growth of the crop so you you have to provide a clean water clean water which is free of sediments or uh, the concentration of sediments has to be less, concentration of salts has to be less, concentration of boron has to be less or what are the concentration that has to be less. We will be discussing all these things, the salinity, alkalinity and what are the ions that has to be present, what are the ions that is not to be present in the water is discussed in the quality of the irrigation water. That means before providing this water to the field what you uh, will see all the parameters that is present in the water. So, the, uh, this here there is a formula that will be asked for your gate question. I mean in one of the gate question there they have asked estimated sodium percentage or SAR sodium absorption ratio is was asked in one of the gate question I mean one of the year a gate question is asked and in engineering service also a 10 marks question was asked on the quality of irrigation water and types of irrigation here also a 10 marks question a theoretical question may be asked from the types of irrigation. Now coming to the coming to next one water requirement of crops. I have given you introduction about the irrigation. Irrigation means artificial supply of water to the field. Artificial supply means a river is going, you have constructed a dam and you have raised the water level and you are utilizing this water for the fields, right. So, that is artificial supply. Naturally, it is not going into the field, you are providing it artificially by construction of dams, weirs, barrages canals many things can be constructed there are many irrigation structures. So, next um, that is irrigation. Now, how much amount of water you have to provide to the field is what we will discuss in water requirement of crops. The name itself says water requirement of crops means how much amount of crop how much amount of water is required by the crop for its growth in that that means when you will provide water to the field before sowing and before harvesting right that means just before sowing the sowing the seeds into the field you will first clean the land and then you will uh, water it then you will sow the uh, seeds and then before harvesting you will do your last watering right. So, that is water requirement of crops and that period is called crop period and we we will also discuss different different types of base uh, periods like base period and then duty. Duty is indirectly called as like for one unit of water how much area is being irrigated is called duty of that water. So, what exactly is duty and delta delta is the depth of the water that is present in the field. Delta is the depth of the water that is present in the field and the relationship between base period duty and delta. So, this is this relationship many many questions I mean maximum number of years the questions is asked based on this relationship only base period duty and delta and this will be the <coughs> in depth relations and in depth proofs will be discussed in your pen drive courses and then duty at various places various places means see first you have provided water. Uh, I mean you have raised the water level in the dam and you are providing this water to the canal and then ca uh, water moves in the canal and then it goes into the field right. During the moment there will be some amount of losses and then during this moment there will be some amount of losses and finally it reaches to the field. So, what is the duty of water at field? 
what is the duty of water at this in the canal what is the duty of the water at the entrance of the canal at exit of the canal at the exit of the branch canal at the exit of distributary i mean there are different different canals at each and every point what is the duty of the water that will be discussed in the, in this uh, topic duty at various places and then irrigation efficiencies efficiencies means what is efficiency Out, in output minus input my mi upon input or input minus output upon input how much amount of water is you, water you are giving how much amount of water it is reaching right that is efficiencies and different types of irrigation efficiencies is like conveyance efficiency uh, application efficiency storage efficiency distribution efficiency many deficiencies problems is also asked on in irrigation efficiency they will simply ask find what is the irrigation efficiency or this is the irrigation efficiency what is the amount of water that is required at the starting at the ending so this is also an important topic uh, gate questions will be asked from the majorly gate questions are asked from here and then engineering service examination questions conventional questions majorly i am not talking in engineering service there will be objective questions and conventional questions and conventional questions will be asked from irrigation efficiencies means not a simply what is irrigation efficiency they'll interlink irrigation efficiency with this one and with the other topics and with the other topics they'll interlink and they'll generate a question and they'll ask you to solve that question so different types of irrigation efficiencies will be discussed over here next topic is soil moisture relationships soil moisture relationships means here you'll this i'll discuss some concepts called field capacity permanent wilting point temporary wilting point readily available moisture and amount of moisture that is required so <coughs> name itself says readily available moisture means the moisture that is present in the field soil holds some amount of water for the growth of the plants right so that is called soil moisture relationships that means the depth of the water that is present in the soil is called as or how much amount of depth of water that is present in the soil is found out from soil moisture relationships and this is also an important important concept from both gate and engineering service point of view so here based on field capacity or permanent wilting point means the name itself says permanent wilting point means it is not going to it is totally wilted up so it regains the strength only after providing water to it that is permanent wilting point and then what is temporary wilting point uh, and then what is the amount of moisture that has to be added to bring the water to its field capacity everything will be discussed in soil moisture relationships and the entire entire topic is important for both gate and engineering services point of view many years even in the last year you can see the questions are asked page questions are asked from soil moisture relationships last before year it is asked from b d and delta that will just based on that relationships they will give you delta they will ask you to find out duty and base they'll give you base period they'll ask you to find out delta a, a anything so water requirement of crops is the important concept for both gate and engineering service point of view and it is also the scoring concept many times you know sometimes people read only this concept and they have scored i mean if you are lucky but don't do that ever <coughs> you re read each and every concept from both the point of view from both gate and engineering service point of view you have to read each and every topic the next topic is theory of consumptive use here theory of consumptive use in this i'll be discussing consumptive use what exactly is consumptive use you know <coughs> plant absorb some amount of water from the field in that plants will have leaves from the leaves water will be evaporated that is called transpiration and some amount of water is evaporated from the field that is evaporation combinedly you will call it as evapotranspiration based on the evapotranspiration or uh, based on this one 
<coughs> that means this amount of water is evapotranspirated. You provide this what this amount of water, this amount of water is evapotranspirated. So based on this one, that means you are providing 10 mm of water. 2 mm is evapotranspirated. That means if you measure this one, if you measure 2 mm, you say that 10 mm amount of water is uh, required or 10 mm amount of water is absorbed by the plant. So that is how it is calibrated. That means we calculate evapotranspiration, we calibrate it to the amount of water that is required in the field and then we will use that in the soil moisture relationship. See everything is interlinked over here. That means you are you going, uh, once if you know consumptive use, then only you can use soil moisture relationship. That is the idea. I mean while doing the proofs you will come to know how it is interlinked and based on consumptive use that means it is the amount of water that is required per day. So based on this you can find out the frequency of the irrigation that means after how many days you have to irrigate the water that means for these many days <coughs> that means for 10 days you have provided 10 cumex of water after 10 days you will provide one more 10 cumex of water to bring that to the field capacity. So based on the consumptive use you can find out the frequency of irrigation. What exactly is each and everything will be discussed in the P drive courses. Next types of as I said irrigation requirements. So <coughs> irrigation requirement means it is very simple calculation the amount of water required. Irrigation requirement, consumptive use irrigation requirement. Next net irrigation requirement, next gross irrigation requirements, these are the different different types of irrigation requirements that will be discussed in types of irrigation requirements and methods to determine consumptive use that means I said that is indirectly methods to determine evapotranspiration that is also discussed here only. So uh, different types of methods is there like you know. Uh, lysimeter method and then blenny criddle equations, Penman's equations, uh, experimental plot method and input uh, inflow outflow method. These are the different different methods that is used to find out the consumptive use. Remember consumptive use is very much important to find the frequency of irrigation. So based upon the frequency of irrigation yield of the crop is dependent and this whole topic is generally more important in from engineering services point of view but you know sometimes uh, in if if he wants to make uh, the paper tough tough in the sense it just becomes lengthy then he'll ask you a question from consumptive use irrigation point of view he'll just interlink consumptive use with irrigation efficiencies and finally you have to calculate the depth of the water that is required. So these both the things will be interlinked and questions will be asked. See here irrigation efficiency, soil moisture relationship, consumptive use. All these things will be interlinked and questions will be asked for <coughs> and if you score this question it, you know generally people do not attempt that question because it is very lengthy but if you do this question you know you have upper hand over all the other people. So that is uh, one of the great advantage of uh, reading this concept to use concept. Next coming to canal irrigation system, canal irrigation system till now we have discussed what is irrigation, amount of water that is required for the irrigation and all those things. Now how do you get water? You get the water to the fields from the canals. Remember I am talking only from uh, irrigation point of view. Irrigation is artificial application of water to the fields. So canal irrigation system. In canal irrigation system first we will discuss where you have different different definitions like what is a canal, what is a lined canal, what is an unlined canal and what are the advantages of the canal, what are the disadvantages of the canal and where you can provide, what is the site for providing the canals. You know <coughs> a canal is to be provided so that more amount of fields is irrigated. You know sometimes canals <coughs> Canals is um, people 
you generally think that you are providing canal only for irrigation, but they will use that for drinking water purpose also. So, you know many things has to be considered and the length of the canal should be very, very less so that losses will be less. You have to see from it from economy point of view also, because uh, the idea is you have to reduce the losses, increase the discharge. That is the major idea in lined canals. So, everything will be discussed in canal definitions and what is the gross, the gross command area, culturable command area, gross command area means when a canal goes, it irrigates all the area, but in that area there will be institutions, there will be fields, there will be you know <coughs> uh, uh, residential area and all those things will be there and you, you are not going to irrigate the residential area, you are not going to irrigate the institutional area right you are only irrigating the fields. So, culturable command area means irrigated land that is irrigatable land that is present in the gross command area and then based on this we will calculate the intensity of irrigation and you know what exactly is intensity of irrigation is the area that is actually irrigated in the field is called intensity of irrigation and how you are going to use that intensity of irrigation in solving the problems and different uh, different other definitions like time factor, crop factor, everything will be discussed in the definitions uh, chapter. Next crops and cropping pattern, this, this one and this one will be interlinked, crops and cropping pattern and base period duty delta will be interlinked and questions are generally made both in gate and engineering services. So, crops and cropping pattern, different types of crops, cropping pattern like what are the seasons we have? We have Karif season, summer season, Rabi season, like in Karif season, uh, what are the crops? The best example for Karif crop is rice and best example for Rabi crop is wheat. So, what are the different types of crops? You have to have an idea. They directly ask you question like um, wheat and rice are made and which uh, intensity is this one. So, calculate delta, calculate duty, calculate the base period for different different crops. So, this is how they are going to frame the questions. So, you have to remember different types of crops. What is the cropping pattern? I mean Karif season, What from which month to which month it is Karif season, from which month to which month it is Rabi season, you know Rabi season is generally from October to February. So, that is how you have to remember and every every crop and every um, I mean cropping pattern crop um, and after, after rice crop can you directly grow for wheat crops? No, you have to use some leguminous plants in order to increase the nutrition, uh, nutrition of the field and then sometimes you have to keep the uh, crop barren lands because in order automatically automatically it has to generate some strength for growth of other crops. So, all those things will be discussed in this crops and cropping pattern and you have to remember what are the crops that is done in different different seasons. So, that you can apply this over here and the questions are generally solved based on one, this one crops and cropping pattern culturable command area, gross command area which is interlinked with base period, duty and delta and you know very basic questions. While solving the questions you will come to know that these are very very basic questions uh, and this is just simply remember there is one relationship and you will read this that in curry season this is the crop and these two parameters will be given and third parameter is to be calculated that is it. And in engineering services, this one, this one, this one and irrigation efficiencies, these four things will be interlinked and questions will be asked and those questions will also be discussed in P drive courses and mean pre, I mean previous years questions and non gate questions, non PSU questions, non ESC questions will also be discussed in P drive courses. That means, I will be discussing all those questions in the classes and a material will be given to you in which all the questions will be there and there will be a separate 
pattern or separate part where you will be having practice questions and those practice questions or solutions for those practice questions a group will be created in whatever the social networking site whether it is Facebook, Twitter, a group will be created in that group we are going to post you the solutions for different different questions. Now <coughs> after this one losses, losses of water in the canals, what are the different losses? See, you know, basic idea. When water is flowing in the canal, what are the different losses? Evaporation losses, seepage losses, next, you know, percolation, absorption, water logging, different, different losses of the water in the canals will be there. We, in order to overcome these losses, you are going for lining of the canal, seepage, seepage has to be reduced and then evaporation, you are going to reduce the evaporation, how you are going to reduce the evaporation, generally you know mechanical covers are provided, a thin films are provided, so all those things, but how you are going to reduce the seepage will be discussed here, but how you are going to reduce the evaporation will be discussed in the hydrology. So losses of water in the canals will be discussed here. Uh, <coughs> I mean this is a theoretical question and this theoretical question is generally asked in engineering services but not in your gate. Next design of canals, <coughs> this is the important topic in uh, <coughs> canals. So design of canals if you see it is designed based on Kennedy's theory, Lacey's theory and Shields theory. Kennedy's theory it is uh, somewhat tiresome, but this is based on non-silting and non-scovering velocity. So what is non-silting, non-scovering velocity? That means <coughs> while water is moving, the particles will not silt up or it gets, it does not get sedimentated or it will not take the soil with it. That means the water is not coming with that force. That is non-scovering velocity non-silting velocity. So Kennedy's theory is based on non-scovering velocity and non-silting velocity and there are many limitations for the Kennedy's theory because we are going to assume many many things, a cutter's equation is applicable and all those things. Many equations and many limitations will be there for Kennedy's theory. So all those limitations is overcome in the Lacey's theory. So Lacey's theory, you know <coughs> engineering service questions, the many questions are asked on Lacey's theory direct application, there will be 6 formulas, apply those formula, then you will get the Lacey's theory and in Lacey's theory the idea is there will be initial rhythm, true rhythm and final rhythm. That means a can initial rhythm, what is initial rhythm, what is final rhythm, you know <coughs> a, a canal gets adjusted. In initial rhythm, side slopes get adjusted and in final rhythm, the bed slope gets adjusted how it is get adjust, how does it gets adjusted and in different different soils, whether in fine grained soils how it gets adjusted, in coarse grained soils how it gets adjusted, everything will be discussed in your Lacey's theory. For from engineering service point of view, Lacey's theory and Kennedy's theory is important and from gate point of view sometimes in some questions they have directly asked the formula of Lacey's theories. So it is important to remember those are empirical equations. So that will be given to you in your P drive courses. So you have to remember that equations in the Lacey's theory. Next Shields theory. Shields theory is based on tractive forces. That means when water moves, when water flows in the canal, if the canal is made up of earthen channel or earthen canal means there is earth. So there will be soil particles. So soil particle water is moving on a soil particle or water is moving like this, right. So there is a tractive force <coughs> that is called shear stresses or shear forces on the sides as well as on the bottom. So the water flow should be such that it should not carry the soil particle with it. So if you design thinking, keeping this in the mind, keeping tractive force theory in the mind, then it is called Shields theory and design of canals, all these theory, we are going to design or we will learn the design of canals based on all these three theories and this is also asked, this is also important from engineering services point of view and <coughs> Uh, many a times uh, just a formula is asked but no questions, no application is made in gate and in your uh, <coughs> uh, 
state public services also questions are not made a direct formula will be asked from Lacey's or Shields theory but in engineering services you will see uh, a good quality of question because majorly questions are asked from Lacey's theory and Shields theory only. Next after coming of canals I said uh, designing of canals that means I told you that there will be seepage of water right. So, water gets seeped into the ground water. So, this seepage has to be arrested, this seepage has to be arrested that can be done by lining of the canals, lining means what you just construct a concrete structures or you will provide a shape to the canal, you will provide a shape to the canal so that water losses or seepage losses will be less and economy, economy will be more. So, that is the idea of lining canals, you know, um, uh, you know most efficient section or most economical section you will get that from the lined canals. So, we will discuss each and every concept in lined canals like for triangular section, for trapezoidal section, how the line section will be there and then economics of the line section will also be discussed. Uh, economics that means um, if this is the seepage is less, maintenance will be more. So, how much increase in maintenance, how much savings in the seepage we will see and finally, whether it is gain or loss. Uh, we will apply different different con um, economical concepts over there and we will see what is the gain, what is the loss by designing of uh, whether you can go for lining or not all those things will be discussed in design of lined canals. Next canals are over, now canals, uh, canals comes from dams, so coming to dams. So, it is indirectly like first we will construct a dam water level will rise, water will go into the canal and then water will go into the field that is the idea dams, canals and water goes into the fields that is how it is linked. So, dams, types of dams, types of dams it depends upon the types of material you are going to use. So, earthen dams, uh, there will be earthen dams, there will be concrete dams, there will be rock fill dams. So, based upon the material, based upon the structural um, concepts like whether it is gravity dam, whether it is non-gravity dam. What does gravity dam means? Gravity dam, in gravity dam if you apply the force, the force is being resisted by its self weight that is called gravity dam. So, how it is going to resist and all the other things uh, we will be discussing in the gravity dams. Here we will be discussing only gravity dams and then <coughs> Uh, in types of dams, I will also discuss designing of arch dams also will be discussed here over here. Here I will be discussing gravity dams and arch dams. Now, types forces acting on gravity dams, forces acting on gravity dams, different forces like you know there will be water force, there will be uplift pressure, there will be self weight, there will be earthquake force, there will be silt pressure, there will be wave pressure, there will be ice pressure. So, different different pressures how they are going to act and how you are going to resist and based on that we will design the dam. So, different types of failure that means when water flows, <coughs> water is flowing like this there is a dam it can overturn or it can slide like this. So, there will be sliding, there could be overturning, there could be crushing or there could be failure due to tension within the structure. So, all those things different modes of failure in the dam and how you are going to see this is also being considered while designing the dam. And finally, based on this one you will draw elementary profile <coughs> and practical profile of the dam. Elementary profile means what is the base width, what is the height of the dam, all those things is decided based on considering forces acting on dam and modes of failure of dam. So, in dams there will be spillway section and there will be non overflow section, overflow section, non overflow section, overflow section is called as spillways and non overflow section, non overflow section only. So, spillways. So, different types of spillways like there will be Ugi spillway, chute spillway and then trough spillway, uh, <coughs> siphon spillway all the types of spillways will be discussed in uh, analysis of gravity dams. So, each and designing of Ugi spillway and designing of 
siphon spillway will be discussed over here and in brief introduction about different different spillways also will be discussed here and this is important from <coughs> <coughs> engineering services point of view throughout the thing everything is important from engineering services point of view and from great point of view elementary profile and practical profile of the dam is uh, important because directly they have asked you the formulas for the base width and height of the dam just by seeing the if you remember the formulas there will be option over there just take the option and then you will get your two marks so that is the idea from the gravity dams and uh, doubts if you are say if you are having any doubts uh, all those doubts will also be discussed in that social networking group uh, I mean let us say if I created a Facebook group in that Facebook group I am if you have any doubt you can uh, post that doubt and it will be cleared in that group that is the idea so <coughs> Uh, this is important from engineering services point of view and this one elementary profile and practical profile of the dam is important for your both gate and public service I mean state public service examinations. Now after the dams, after the dams the other irrigation structures are weirs, barrages. So weirs and barrages, major problem in weirs and barrages is when you water is flowing you have constructed a barrage difference difference between dams and barrages will also be discussed major difference is what here there will be storage and movement of water here it is only for supply of water there is no storages in weirs and barrages compared to that of dam <coughs> storage in weirs and barrages is less and compared to that of weirs storage in barrages is very very less there will not be any pondages any storages so with the help of figures you can show they directly ask what is the difference between weirs and barrages in your interview question they will ask you what is the difference between weirs and barrages you will just draw a figure and you will show and or uh, I mean I will give that figure in your p drive courses you will just draw a figure and you will show this is the difference and that is enough that is enough to crack your interviews so that is how it has to be uh, very very short and crisp your answers has to be straightforward, short and crisp that will fetch you good amount of marks and types of C theory of seepage how water is seeping below the weirs and barrages and <coughs> blight creep theory, lames weighted theory, coastless theory here <coughs> how I mean you will be providing sheet piles a piles will be provided in order to reduce the seepage so even then the seepage occurs but idea is to reduce the failure the idea is to because of seepage there will be undermining piping effect will be there there will be uplift pressure will be there so uh, we have to overcome all these things so this is being overcome in bike creep theory and <coughs> there are the limitations for bike creep theory which is overcome in lame sweated theory and the combined uh, limitations of blikes and lame sweet uh, weighted creep theory is overcome in Coslas theory of independent variables. So now we are using this here you will be using the <coughs> equipotential lines and then I mean streamlines which you would have heard in your fluid mechanics equipotential lines and streamlines and this is more or less equal to the practical thing that is happening in the field. So <coughs> more questions I mean generally um, uh, in two years uh, if he wants to make uh, tough paper tough he will give question from here Kosla's theory of independent variables. So here also if he wants to make the question tough he will give question from modes of failures of dam. So, so you can't just neglect this one when you do that type of question you will you will be having an upper hand over other people. So here and from engineering services point of view also Kosla's theory of independent variables is very very important and Blake's creep theory this is a simple theory and if paper is easy you will directly see a formula from here which you can directly apply that means you read the formula from here and you will see the formula over there you will tick it and you will get your marks. So <coughs> Kosla's theory of independent variables here what are the streamlines what are the equipotential lines I mean <coughs> what is the potential over here what is the head over there everything will be discussed and what is the 
exit gradient the limitations in Blake's theory will be overcome in Kosla's theory of independent variables and this is <coughs> this is what you are going to discuss in Beers and Barrages and coming to after this one I will be discussing water logging effect. Initially I told you the disadvantages of irrigation is water logging. Water logging means what? There is a land and it is completely submerged in the water. So what happens? Actually plant requires water only right for its growth. Then what happens if there is more water? If there is more water there will not be air. Air is also required for the roots for its growth. So because of water logging the yield of the plant will be reduced and how much it will be reduced what are the other causes of water logging that uh, one lo loss is this one other losses breeding of mosquitoes uh, many uh, infections and all those things will be discussed this one what are the effects of water logging what are the causes of water logging causes of water logging is over irrigation or sometimes the <coughs> other person from his field if he releases water onto the downstream field it gets completely logged so there will not be any growth of the plants so all those things effect of water logging will be seen we'll, we are going to seeing the effects of water logging and now reasons for the water logging will also be seen in this one and then reclamation of saline and alkaline soil. Saline and alkaline soil means when you pour the water the salts will be present on the uh, uh, land right. So this salts has to be removed. So how you are going to remove those salts from the soil that means by huge that is one of the advantage by of I mean if there is one of the disadvantages the other advantage would be if you, uh, you discharge the water at the higher rate or if you flood it flood the land with the huge amount of water huge amount of fresh water then all the salts will be removed along with the water. So that is one way of reclamation of the soils there are many other ways that will be discussed in reclamation of saline and alkaline soils. Next de <coughs> design of subsurface drainage system why you have to design the subsurface drainage system that means there is a land there is a water. So in the bottom I will provide a pipe so that it sucks off maximum amount of water and then only some amount of water is pro uh, uh, I mean present over here and this water is utilized by the plant for its growth. So this subsurface drainage system is designed based on water logging. So that is why it is provided or this one is provided in water logging and this is majorly important in your engineering service examination questions. This is a <coughs> uh, problematic questions these are problems and if they want to ask theory theories are asked from here and problems are asked from here and recently both theory and problems are given equal weightage in your paper 2 so you have to read everything and if this this is a scoring one this is a scoring one and in gate till now they haven't asked this question but there is every possibility that means you know uh, if he wants you to surprise then he will give you a question from here it is somewhat lengthy but if you practice it it becomes easy and you can score score well in this problem also next after all the major topics there are some miscellaneous topics like meandering of rivers here meandering means water will not always flow like this it will move in this fashion it will move in this fashion because of its speed <coughs> sometimes because of uh, if, if it is moving very very slow there will be sedimentation of the um, that means sedimentation of the particles that is present in the water. If it is moving at faster rate there will be <coughs> scouring of the soil right. So because of that the course of the water keeps on changing so that is called meandering of rivers this meandering of rivers you know you in interviews they will ask uh, you know Ganga is a meandering river so what is sinusity what is meandering and if sinusity uh, is more than 1.5 what happens if it is less than 1.5 what happens what is meandering width what is meandering length so this is an uh, interview topic see you can think that if I score well in well in my um, conventional part or well in my 
<coughs> gate exams it is enough no interview is also equally important from both gate and engineering services point of view so meandering of rivers is also important and then canal outlets last time a question is being asked from canal outlet uh, <coughs> there is like non modular outlets semi modular outlets modular outlets gate question is being uh, is being asked as the following so yeah, it very simple thing three different types of outlets will be there and <coughs> each and every outlet I mean what is this outlet what is that outlet it is basically based on water in the water course and the water outlet or in the canal and the water outlet I told you already different types of canals will be there like main and branch canals distributaries major and minor distributaries and water course and outlet factor all these things depends upon the discharge it is being carried like if discharge is more than 30 cumex if discharge is from 10 to 30 cumex if it is from 1 to 10 cumex if it is less than 1 cumex what happens that is for canal outlets based on that you will say what are the different types of outlets non modular semi modular modular so these are the different types of outlets next cross drainage works cross drainage works means what a river is flowing a canal is flowing now how you are going to overcome this if canal is moving above then you will construct a aqueduct that is a cross drainage work and if canal is moving below the river you will <coughs> you know you will provide a super passage and there will be siphon aqueduct there will be siphon there will be level crossings there will be inlet and outlet structures all those things will come in cross drainage works and we are going to <coughs> here the design is not important from gate point of view but design is important from engineering services point of view so designings designs will also be discussed designs of cross drainage works will also be discussed over here next fuming of the canals fuming of the canals means it reducing the width of the canal <coughs> while overcoming the that means a river is flowing like this canal is flowing like this will sometimes reduce the width of the canal that is called fuming of the canal how you are going to flume the canal and means that means the width at the reduced portion and width at the normal portion how you are going to do that everything will be discussed in the fuming of canal and under sluices means you are providing water below <coughs> You are providing a sluice and you are transferring the canal water under it. That is the under sluices. What are its advantages and disadvantages will be discussed, but not the design. Whereas, fluming of canal designs will be discussed here. Next, river training works. River training work means <coughs> you know how you are going to reduce the width of the uh, river or increasing the width of the river, increasing the discharge or reducing the discharge, different types of groins all those things will be discussed in river training works and this is <coughs> here in, in canal outlets you will see the flexibility and all those things here this is also sometimes will be asked in your objective questions of engineering service examinations till now no subjective questions has been asked from river training works so what is afflicting uh, i mean deflecting groins and what is <coughs> accepting groins all those things will be attracting groins not accepting groins deflecting groins attracting groins all those things will be discussed in river training works so these are the 10 topics i mean i have discussed the whole syllabus into 10 topics you can see all the 10 topics over here each and every topic in detail will be discussed in your pen drive courses <coughs> in a crisp format that means if you read this properly you can crack any examinations in India any examinations you can easily crack if you read this properly and <clears throat> all those what are the references books will also be given to you in your p drive courses you can go through that but maximum maximum this is enough and <clears throat> notes also while while discussing in the p drive courses you can prepare your own notes by um, sitting or just by listening to whatever I have been uh, teaching over here that is enough um, if you write that one also you get better marks in gate you might score up to 98 or some, the maximum was 90 92 out of 100 so you can score up to that marks whereas in engineering services the overall like you know prelims mains and interview combined the first ranker will be in the range of 65 to 70 percent of marks so 
here if you read each and everything properly out of this 50 to 30 marks you can score 25 marks easily this is a scoring subject because many times you don't see theories over here pro only problems is being asked so if you solve the problems properly so you can easily score in your engineering services also and generally here a practice booklet see this is a practice booklet for both water resource engineering and hydrology and here it is generally divided into three parts in the first part i will be discussing previous years gate questions and uh, engineering service questions that means questions will be given to you and answers or solutions will be discussed over here that means i will discuss the solutions and answers and non engineering services non psu questions that is part 3 questions will be given to you i will discuss the solutions and there will be practice questions in the part 2 that will be that has to be solved by you and if there are any doubts that will be discussed in a uh, whatever the uh, social networking side group you will post your doubt and we will give you the solutions so this is what i will do in water resource engineering and next one is hydrology hydrology so hydrology the weightage for gate is 2 to 4 marks engineering service examination is 50 to 30 marks both water resource engineering and hydrology weightage is more, more or less it's same so same concept goes with hydrology also you can't neglect it because everyone i tell you the person who is seriously preparing for gate or engineering service examinations will definitely score good in both hydrology and water resource engineering so in hydrology also you have the questions are very very simple you just have to score it because more or less they will be asking problematic questions in gate and then engineering services also more many many problems will be asked from this hydrology and theory is less and theory also uh, you know the basic theories I will discuss that and you know, will see while I am discussing it so first chapter in hydrology is definitions the hydrology the name itself says hydro means water logos means study it's like study of water study of movement of water actually so definitions of in definitions hydrological cycle you know in one of the engineering service examinations they just asked you to explain hydrological cycle direct if you just draw the figure of hydrological cycle that was enough to get give you 10 marks hydrological cycle means i think in your 12th class you would have learned it like you know precipitation evaporation in precipitation evaporation infiltration runoff and there will be evapotranspiration transpiration and uh, there will be groundwater flow there will be surface flow you know all those things will be discussed in definitions uh, and res here residence time what is meant by residence time the name itself is for how much time the water presents in the given format or like you know in precipitation precipitation means what rainfall so snowfall glaze drizzle everything comes in precipitation and then infiltration then evaporation runoff each and everything will be discussed in hydrology that is the different different chapters over here precipitation evaporation infiltration runoff surface runoff or subsurface runoff which is also called as base flow all those things will be discussed and then what is water budget equation so what like financial budget water budget that is coming minus uh, going is equal to change in storage so the all those things will be discussed in the definitions and what is water catchment area what is ridge and here a 10 marks question as i told you 10 marks question was asked uh, or based on hydrological cycle and a based on water budget equation also uh, one time they have asked in engineering service examinations and basically in gate they they never touched this part in gate but they they you know they may surprise you by giving you the water budget equation from definitions and coming to the next part precipitation which is the important part in <coughs> hydrology many a time the gate question is being asked from uh, precipitation and engineering service minimum 10 marks is being asked from precipitation in precipitation the name itself says precipitation means the mode of water whatever the mode if water reaches from atmosphere onto the earth then it is called precipitation it can be rainfall it can be snowfall it can be glaze it can be drizzle it can be sleet 
so what are the types of precipitation and how you are going to differentiate all these things what is drizzle what is rainfall where, uh, on what basis you are going to uh, change it uh, define it like you know if uh, size of drop intensity of rainfall all those things will be discussed in types of precipitation and types of rainfall there could be orographic rainfall there will be conventional rainfall so how you are going to differentiate all these types of rainfall this is a theory question and theory question is important in engineering service examinations and <coughs> cyclonic rainfall all those rainfall frontal rainfall warm air cold air and anti cyclones cyclones and what is the rotation of the wind in anti cyclones what is the rotation of wind in cyclones in northern hemisphere in sou southern hemisphere so what are the different different effects because of which the cyclones occurs all those things will be discussed in types of precipitations now definitions related to rainfall as i told you different types of rainfalls are there and then uh, <coughs> coming to rainfall what is annual average rainfall each and everything will be whatever you do here will be expressed in terms of annual average rainfall means in a on an average throughout an year what is the rainfall like last year it was 160 centimeters this year 120 centimeters next year 130 like for 30 years what is the average so oh, on an average in india it is 120 centimeters that is annual average rainfall that definition or what is drought what is flood so different types of droughts hydrological drought meteorological drought um, rainfall deficiency everything will be discussed in the definitions related to rainfall and here also this is a theoretical question and uh, here the question that might be asked is drought in the rainfall in the engineering service examinations and uh, <coughs> droughts and rainfall deficiency is important rainfall deficiency may be asked in gate and rainfall deficiency is, will be asked in objectives of objective questions of uh, engineering service examinations next measurement of rainfall this is important measurement of rainfall there is non recording type of rain gauge for measurement of rainfall we use an instrument called rain gauges non recording type of rain gauges recording type of rain gauges what are the differences in non recording recording and <coughs> simpson's type of rain gauges and weighing bucket type tipping bucket type of rain gauges so <coughs> if you know all those things this is a theoretical question but the tipping bucket weighing bucket type uh, will be uh, can be asked as problems can be asked very rare cases but they can be asked as the problems and simpson's rain gauge that is a theoretical question they might ask you to explain and draw and explain how you are going to record the rainfall by using simpson's rain gauge and how generally we are going to measure rainfall rainfall is measured in terms of depth like generally if you see 120 mm 90 mm rainfall 90 centimeters rainfall 10 mm rainfall it is the depth by which the water stands over the given area is called as rain gauges and how, for how much area you have to provide one rain gauge what is the density of rain gauges all those things will be uh, calculated in measurement of rainfall or will be discussed in the measurement of rainfall and this is also a theoretical question and now coming to the average rainfall and design of rain gauge station this is important optimum number of rain gauge stations that means um, in order to increase the efficiency in order to increase the accuracy more number of rain gauge stations more number of accuracy but economically it will not be good so what is the optimum number a formula is given to you based on statistical data so based on that you calculate the design of optimum rain gauge stations and based upon the weighted theories also you can calculate the optimum number of rain gauge stations next average rainfall average rainfall let us say in a given area there are six rain gauge stations or 10 rain gauge stations 20 rain gauge stations so for that area if they ask you rainfall what will you say you have to calculate the average of it for that you have to you can use arithmetic mean method so different methods are there, there are arithmetic mean method, Thiessen polygon method, isohydral method, what is a isohyte, isohyte is the line joining points of equal rainfall intensities. So <coughs> all those things, each and every method is discussed in detail and Thiessen polygon method, uh, in gate they have asked question on Thiessen polygon method, in isohydral method also, isohydral method is generally asked in engineering services and arithmetic mean method also they can ask in gate. 
Now coming to determination of missing rainfall data, this is very much important from gate point of view. Here the missing rainfall data means there are 10 rain gauge stations, 9 rain gauge stations you have data for that year or for that day or for that time period, but in one rain gauge station it was not able to record it. There could be many reasons for it, many many reasons for it, but how you are going to find that point is important. So, missing rainfall data you can go it by average value. So, you know there is average method and there is a normal ratio method. When you are going to use average method, when you are going to use normal ratio method will be discussed in your PD courses by examples. So, this is an important thing many a time you can see a gate question is from this point gate question is many a time is from this point. Next consistency of the records here double masker a new technique called double masker what is a masker? Masker means discharge with respect to time is a masker, rainfall with respect to time is called a masker that means a quantity its variation with respect to time is called masker. Double masker means on both abscissa and ordinate both abscissa and ordinate you will find uh, quantities mass quantities only here also it is mass quantity here also it is mass quantity then it is called double mass curve method and here it will be written in reverse chronological order to find the consistency of records means let us say one year it was 90 centimeters other year also it is 90 centimeters and suddenly it reached to 180 centimeters and then it reduced to 50 centimeters. So, there is uneven change in the graph and the, the consistency of record is changed. It might be because of any things, because of natural effects or because of the uh, you know the uh, throughout the surroundings is undergoing a gradual change or it may be because of eye error, human error. So, you do not know in order to find out the correct value you will use double mass curve technique for measuring consistency of records. Many a time this is asked in match the following. So, the consistency of records this both ESC objective and gate objective also this question is asked two marks questions. So, or one mark question also it can be asked in gate. Next intensity duration frequency curves this also plays an important role intensity duration frequency curves that intensity depth frequency it is also called as intensity depth frequency curves frequency is related to time period depth and intensity higher intensity higher depth, but higher time period lesser depth. So, how the curves changes will be discussed in detailed in this IDF curves next evaporation evaporation. So, all these things comes in precipitation and if you consider the losses of precipitation first one is evaporation that means water reach the earth surface and then it goes back from the earth surface to the atmosphere that is evaporation. Evaporation is more in oceans or rivers where it will be more why it would be more everything will be discussed and factors affecting evaporation like uh, <coughs> temperature, wind, vapor pressure, atmospheric pressure, depth of water bodies how it is going to affect and shape of water bodies everything will be discussed in factors affecting evaporation and this is important in your uh, ESC theoretical question and methods to prevent evaporation. So, methods to prevent evaporation that means water should not evaporate you can provide mechanical covers that means just go and put cover the water so that water will not get evaporated providing some thin films or by increasing the depth and reducing the area you can prevent the evaporation. So, the different different methods each method in detail will be discussed and this is also a theory question and then methods to find evaporation here uh, as you know pan evaporation technique here you know this could be a problematic question pan evaporation there is class A pan there is Colorado sunken pan there is ISA pan. So, you will uh, you know you uh, in the lake in the still water you create a pan and you will see how much amount of water is evaporating and you will use some coefficient to find the actual evaporation in the actual river. So, all those things river or actual lake that is used to find the evaporation. So, these are the methods and there is one uh, empirical method a formula is given to you based on Dalton's law that can also be used to find the evaporation. 
Now, after the evaporation, I am going for stream flow measurement. Stream flow means name itself is in the river water is flowing. You have to measure the discharge. Stream flow measurement means discharge measurement. So, the discharge measurement, there are many methods for measuring the discharge where you will measure the stage. Stage means depth of the water. Based on the depth of the water, you will give the discharge. Generally, this is what you will do. You will see scales in the rivers, in the dams or anywhere you will see the scales and they will measure the depth of the water. For this depth, this is the discharge. This, as this was initially calibrated. A graph is there from discharge and stage curves. So, from stage, stage means depth. So, based on this depth, this is the discharge you will give. That is stage discharge curves. That is one way of measurement. Next, other way of measurements is there are, uh, direct methods and indirect methods. Direct method means discharge is area into velocity, right? So, we we'll, we have to measure velocity. So, velocity can be measured by using floats and current meter. Current meter is an instrument used to measure the velocities. So, velocity, current meter. Floats, floats means a thermo, uh, you know, small um, uh, a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard is being sent on this one. The distance traveled by time, you can get the velocity and then current meter. So, current meter also, you can find out the uh, velocity is current meter in instrument which is having sounding weight and then <coughs> it will be moving in the horizontal direction, it will be moving, it can be moving in vertical direction also. From this you can measure the velocities. So, based on velocities, area into velocity and there will be many other methods, moving mode methods, dilution method, ultrasonic methods, all those comes under direct methods. Indirect methods is like, you know, construction of structures, weirs. And there is slope area method. Each and every method will be discussed in detail because this is also from engineering services point of view. Many a time a current meter is being asked for a gate and these methods is asked in engineering service examinations. But this is a scoring point from the scoring marks from that point of view. Now coming to flood measurement. I have discussed stream flow measurement, flood measurement. Flood is a characteristic situation where discharge is very much high either in the river or on the field, wherever. Flood is a situation where this is the normal water level and there is a sudden rise in the water level. How much this rise or how much this discharge, calculation of this discharge is flood measurement. For that, a rational method that means for urban areas where flow area is less than 50 hectares, hectares, you can go for rational method <coughs> where discharge is calculated based on runoff coefficient, rainfall intensity, area. If you substitute that in formula, you will get this one. You know, in a ESC question, this is being interlinked with environmental engineering. This formula is interlinked with environmental engineering. So, <coughs> you know, interlinking of questions. <coughs> will also be given in engineering service examinations. <coughs> Sorry. Next, there will be empirical equations that is Rice formula, Dickens formula, English formula. Depending upon the different place situations, empirical equations are generated. <coughs> so, <coughs> the equations can be asked in objective questions and <coughs> in subjective till now they have not used it. Now, probability method, probability method means let us say 100 cumex of discharge can occur for 100 years. So, that means that is the probability. So, the chance of occurring that in 200 years is 2 times. So, what is the probability of occurrence of that flood in these many years or these many times? So, we are going to find out that probability and based on that probability, we will design the structure. So, we will calculate the design uh, discharge from that probability method. There are two types of probability methods, theoretical probability method, statistical probability method. There are Gumbel's equation, statistical probability method. There is a return period. What is return period? Return period means for after how many years this much amount of flood or this much amount of rainfall comes. All those things will be discussed in probability method and <coughs> other method of measuring the flood is hydrograph and unit hydrograph. Hydrograph is the variation of discharge with respect to 
time. Discharge means water is flowing on the land, that means runoff, right? Variation of the runoff with indirectly, it is variation of runoff with the time. And unit hydrograph, why? What is the difference between direct runoff hydrograph, unit hydrograph, flood hydrograph? Everything will be discussed in hydrograph and unit hydrograph. The same concept, the same concept is seen in runoff also. You say use of hydrograph and unit hydrograph means this concept is actually discussed here. But by using this also you can measure flood measurement. Flood is also measured like this flood means indirectly we are measuring the discharge only here also. Here it is in stream, here it is flood that means very rare situations. Now after runoff, after runoff, after flood infiltration this is also one of the laws of precipitation so infiltration means water is entering into the ground that is considered as infiltration there is diff so here we will see what is infiltration what is percolation what is seepage differences between all these things next losses due to infiltration losses due to infiltration would be depression storage interception losses what is this depression storage means you know water is stored on the top surface it is it is not entering into the ground that means it is not infiltrated that is considered as infiltration loss and interception losses that means water you know sometimes absorbed on the top of your house it is not entering into the ground right so or uh, sometimes uh, the water <coughs> water is absorbed by the plant it is not entering into the ground all those things comes under interception losses so what are in depth in depth will be discuss, you know, discussing over there and um, there is no problems on this it is only for theoretical concept but Horton's equation Horton's equation is to calculate the amount of infiltration that is actually occurring in the field. That means initially the infiltration will be more over a period of time the infiltration keeps on reducing and it becomes constant after some time. So that exactly how much amount of infiltration it is occurring and what is that equation how to use that equation will be discussed in Horton's equation and this main I mean <coughs> more number of times a problem is asked from Horton's equation. So this is also important from gate point of view and in engineering services it is not asked that much but it is also important from engineering services but from gate point of view this equation is important. Next comes more important thing infiltration indices. This is important from gate, uh, uh, engineering service examination, state service examination, whatever the examination you know many times you will see a question based on phi index w index phi index w index average infiltration rate phi index or w index average infiltration rate this is also average infiltration rate how you are going to calculate phi index that is what is <coughs> average runoff over here everything that means rainfall above phi index is called as runoff so phi index is considered as average infiltration rate. Here a concept called hydrographs comes into the picture. What is hydrographs? How to calculate phi index based on trial and error method? Everything will be discussed here. So this concept is very much important from both gate point of view as well as IES point of view whereas state services point of view also phi index and W index is very much important. Next coming to runoff. Runoff means precipitation, water goes, infiltration, next whatever the water that is flowing on the ground or just below the ground it is considered as runoff. Types of runoff, there will be direct runoff, there will be base flow. So runoff means surface runoff, so water flowing on the surface and then finally it reaches to the ocean or nearby rivers and then from the bottom base flow means below ground water flow will also finally reach to the rivers. So all those things comes under runoff. So types of runoff, direct runoff, base flow, <coughs> everything will be. So this what is direct runoff, what is base flow? I told you right now but in depth will be discussed in types of runoff and how you are going to find out there will be empirical formulas so and there will be as I told you hydrograph and unit hydrograph more amount of questions here also if he wants to make somewhat 
critical questions or typical questions generally it is an easy questions if you use s curve concept it is somewhat lengthy so why uh, <coughs> if he is using s curve concept then <coughs> if you do that problem you will be at the top you believe me you will be at the top because this is an comparative examination if no person is doing that and if you are doing that then <coughs> you will get better marks or better rank so this is an important concept here hydrograph unit hydrograph if unit hydrograph is given how you are going to calculate direct run of hydrograph uh, how you are going to calculate uh, flood hydrograph <coughs> direct run of hydrograph plus base flow gives you flood hydrograph all those things will be discussed in use of hydrograph and unit hydrograph next use of infiltration curves by using infiltration curves also that means precipitation uh, below the curve below the infiltration curve it is infiltration and above the infiltration curve it is runoff so all those things will be seen here next use of coefficient of runoff coefficient of runoff means <clears throat> let us say 65 percent of precipitation is going as runoff so coefficient of runoff is 0 0.65 times runoff or 0 0.65 times precipitation is runoff that is the idea so all these things is used to calculate the runoff and more important thing from examination point of view is hydrograph and unit hydrograph and this will be discussed in detail over here and problems will be given for here also that means if he wants to make question somewhat you know you just have to think if he wants to make you think he will gives you infiltration curves and this empirical method and coefficient of runoff this is might be asked in your engineering service examinations but not in the gate next in synthetic unit hydrograph this is purely purely theoretical concept he will give you i mean here i will discuss you a hydrograph and empirical equations will be given to you remember that equations and then use that equations for uh, calculation of discharge calculation of discharge or calculation of runoff that is the idea from runoff now once runoff is done with this losses are done now idea is flood routing next chapter is flood routing or flood routing or flood routing means idea is if suddenly water level more amount of rainfall comes what happens flood is occurring flood is occurring means huge amount of discharge is coming and you have to release that discharge so what you have to do is dams or some irrigation structures are constructed to reduce the flood or to reduce the peak so that is the idea that uh, sometimes dams are also constructed to reduce the peak so that is called flood routing or flood routing so this flood routing uh, the structures that is constructed or the dams that is constructed to route the flood it could be you know hydrological flood routing hydraulic flood routing depending upon the situation how you are going to do this there will be channel routing there will be reservoir routing and <clears throat> what is linear channel what is reservoir channel and we will do a problem in with the help of problem we will route a flood there will be inflow hydrograph there will be outflow hydrograph how much amount of storage will be there or is the change in the storage where you will get maximum storage all these concepts will be discussed in flood routing and this is important from engineering services point of view and from gate point of view sometimes they have asked what is the difference between hydraulic flood routing and hydrologic flood routing that is in the match the following and that is also that will also be discussed in flood routing next coming to miscellaneous concepts instantaneous unit hydrograph what is an instantaneous unit hydrograph that means it is a hydrograph generated for instant rainfall it is a uh, you know hypothetical concept but these type of things is also asked in the examinations mainly engineering services they will ask you in engineering services objective questions not in subjective questions next depth area duration curves uh, what is the amount of depth what is the area it is occupying if area is more depth will be less if depth is more area occupied will be less and what is the duration if duration of rainfall is more what happens to the depth what happens to its variation with the area everything will be discussed in depth area duration curves and what is the probable maximum 
precipitation that can occur in the area probable maximum precipitation you know by using probability method i told you will calculate that the same thing this is also a hypothetical concept and then standard project flood so and then probable maximum flood so standard project flood is approximately 65 percent of probable maximum flood all these concepts these are you know objective questions uh, match the following questions these things will be very very useful and <clears throat> the major things you have to see in hydrology is precipitation and from gate point of view precipitation infiltration runoff um, and from engineering services point of view is precipitation evaporation flood measurement stream flow measurement and hydrograph and unit hydrograph indices uh, very very less time you will see indices being asked in engineering questions but from gate point of view index is very much important and application of that means the indices is used in hydrographs how you are going to use that how you are going to generate that question we will see the questions we will discuss that and then we will finish it off that is how it is being done and the same thing there will be three parts here also in the booklet there will be three parts in the first part previous years questions will be discussed in the last part non gate non PSU questions will be discussed the solutions will be given by me in this booklet uh, the questions will be there and the solution will be given by me and the uh, second part practic practice questions has to be done by you and if there are any doubts the doubts will be posted in a group and answers will be given by me. So this is um, all the introduction about water resource engineering and hydrology for the PD courses. Thank you.